going to hand over to uh, one of the best partners I know, Sean McClary, and he's going to talk us into the world of getting Melbourne moving, transport optimization with AI. Uh, thank you, Kel, for the very nice intro. Kel and I have uh, been digital twins for years on this digital twin journey with a number of different clients. So uh, it's been fantastic. I'm going to show you what I uh, think is our uh, most exciting one. So our biggest uh, uh, project that we've ever done with our optimality solution around uh, Department of Transport and Planning in Victoria. So uh, let me just start sharing here and get things going. Okay, so I'll walk us through, uh, first of all, what Optimal Reality is um, and um, the, the basic concepts around the approach, but then get really into the client case study where we've been doing work. Um, it's quite an exciting project. It's pretty different, right? Um, it's not just a single project that we've been doing, but a whole broad program. And so I'll take you through it, show you some real stuff. So we're gonna do demos, not just slides. Um, so first of all, Optimal Reality is a digital twin. So digital twins link the physical and digital world. Um, they, they've been around for decades. So NASA built the first digital twin back in the 60s or 70s um, for space exploration. Um, sectors like Formula One, uh, aviation have been real leaders in this space for, for several years. Um, but it's certainly become more into the mainstream with our clients. And essentially, if I've got a digital version of a physical system, I can use it for a whole bunch of things. I can use it to design a better car because I can look at the different permutations around design. I could actually design it for simulation and training to create a immersive experience or to do what we primarily focus on, which is to design better systems that are based on all the different interactions that could happen in the current time or into the future and understanding those, those permutations as part of the approach. So essentially our digital twin is for digital twin, uh, for much better decision-making processes in complex environments. Um, we really focus around the, the lens of smart cities. So um, um, in the connected environments across things like transport and energy and how these you know, complex environments actually work together. Uh, we're very much focused with optimal reality around real-time decisioning for people that are in mission critical environments. And our key users tend to sit in command centers. So when I go through optimal reality at Department of Transport and Planning, imagine yourself sitting in the command center of DTP trying to control a statewide transport network, which is a super complex job. And so um, what we're doing is actually bringing all this together so that people can actually make better decisions around what's happening now, look at what's happening into the past and looking at what's gonna happen in the future as well. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm gonna go through Department of Transport and Planning. When we started the project, they were called DOT. So Department of Transport, a bit of a merger, they brought in some planning functions as well. It's actually important for us around digital twins because it actually branches out the scope of responsibility with the department, particularly in areas like climate change. Um, so just some important context um, with uh, DTP. So there are two really major programs of work within the state of Victoria, um, where I live, um, um, that are underway. So one is called the Big Build. So the Big Build is a hundred billion dollar infrastructure project to uh, improve our transport system over the next couple of decades. And the other is Smarter Roads. Smarter Roads is the digitization of the transport system to optimize it. So the two are actually very complementary programs of work. Um, so our digital twin program sits within Smarter Roads. So Smarter Roads has everything from deploying lots of hardware infrastructure and sensors to the building of a new whole new command center, but it also has the biggest project around technology that they've ever done, which is our work, right? And so um, it's a digital twin of the whole of the state um, in real time, um, connecting all their different systems so that operators can work much more effectively into, into the future. Um, the context for this, you'll see some of the kind of key call outs on here, I won't go through all the points, but um, we have quite a complex transport environment. Um, Department of Transport is multimodal. So it's actually not just um, just cars, it's actually um, uh, public transport systems. So we've got the largest tram network in the world. It's all the buses, it's all the trains. Um, it's connecting in active transport. So how people are actually moving across the transport network. And then uh, finally, um, it's actually about um, how this is actually gonna go forward in, into the future as well. Um, a couple other key call outs. Um, uh, Transport is one of the largest sources of emissions in the world. Same case here in the state of Victoria. 
Um, it's a great opportunity for decarbonization across the transport network. We've actually got some work underway more broadly in the climate space as well, which is actually helping Victorians adapt to the effects of climate change. Um, so the first scope of work for us was really to establish what we call situational awareness. So bring all this information together that every basically digital element within the transport network all into one spot in real time. So uh, listed across here on the bottom, you'll see all those dot points for people that work in transport. Those will mean things for those that don't, I'll explain them. But these are anything that gives a digital footprint on a transport network. So um, every sensor that sits at a intersection, um, that's called scouts. Uh, anything that sits onto a major motorway, um, Bluetooth sensors that actually detect where vehicles are actually going and how they're tra traveling. Um, anything around like electric, electronic messaging around speed limits or construction sites uh, or where there's been an event on the road that all goes into the network. Uh, anytime there's actually been a car breakdown uh, that's available as part of the approach. We've actually got instrumentation on our full public transport network so we can see all the trains, trams and buses. We bring in third party data. So a lot of you probably heard of like TomTom. TomTom and here are similar systems that actually give us a full statewide view when they don't have instrumentation on the network. And then we bring in weather data as well. So all this comes together into a real-time digital twin platform. We then build apps on top of that platform. So we've got apps to do a number of different things. And one of the apps that I'll show you today is around situational awareness. Uh, finally, this is such a transformative technology for them. Think of it as like tech that unlocks the fundamental operating model. So they are working in really different ways as part of using this approach, ways that they've never been able to work before uh, within the department, but also with interfacing agencies. And by that, I mean like the police emergency services. So some of that's still going to become active into the future, but that's the vision, a connected transport ecosystem across the state. Um, so we look at this not just as, you know, one or two you know, pro independent projects, but a whole program of work. Um, we started with situational awareness. So this builds the core platform and gives an idea of what's going on now. But we've actually started and are gonna start soon a number of other projects. So a couple of things that we do, we actually calculate in real time the financial cost of any congestion on a network. So imagine uh, you're driving down the road in any city, right? You can actually see, all right, this is what this is costing me from a financial perspective. Policymakers can use this to make really important decisions. Um, so we worked with our access economics team to be able to model that out. It's a really interesting piece of work. Uh, we built a really sophisticated approach around mapping. All the systems in the environment have different ways that they map geospatially. We built a tool around doing that that client that client's super excited about. Um, and it actually ties in how we map to OpenStreetMaps, the, the open source mapping layer. Um, we've got other work that's probably going to start soon. Um, a project called SITREP which is around uh, putting environmental events uh, into the backend system in a really advanced and sophisticated way that allows others to do it, not just the department. And then hopefully we'll start soon. We've done the strategy on a, a climate adaptation project that was really kicked off in the response to the bushfires that happened in Australia two years ago where they had issues around getting Victorians to safety. So um, we did the strategy. We need to go to tender because it's uh, such a big project on the build side. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be getting good news on that soon. Um, and then finally, we see a lot of other projects that could happen as part of the program within the department, but with other agencies and actually in the commercial sector as well. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move to a demo. I'm going to show a couple things, right? And I'm going to go through this quick. Um, one is the uh, interface in terms of situational awareness from a, from a mapping layer. So this is what. Any that, anybody that works in the command center sees when they log in every day. Um, and then the second thing um, uh, is I'll actually go to how our computer vision system works. It's called uh, Operality Audio Auto Eye, um, because to show you that effectively, I got to be on the DTP network. So I'll just show you through a couple uh, screenshots. That's not DTP data. I can't show that, but uh, we're using open source data. It'll give you the kind of the same view. Okay. So like I said, I'm gonna go through this quickly. It's a, uh, uh, a lightning speed tour, but this is what people see every day. This is uh, a view of the state of Victoria, I zoomed in a little bit on Melbourne here. Uh, and this is what an operator sees when they log into the system. Um, we are gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna show you the first thing that people go to um, 
which is they might want to actually understand things like, okay, we've got um, uh, different speeds across different parts of the network, right? And we can do this at an aggregated level or drill into detail. Um, but what they really want to see is kind of how is everything going, right? Against a bunch of different metrics. So we've got 12 core uh, metrics that we're actually using. Um, anything from travel times in the network to speeds to occupancy, productivity, kind of works like Google, looks like Google Maps, uh, but there's a lot more data within it. Um, we can also see um, all the rules of the road, right? So restrictions, so things like where there's um, clearances for trucks on roads, um, where there's different clearways, you know, where, where you can you know, park, where you can't. Um, the uh, um, re restrictions onto the road around um, uh, where you can go as well um, are all observable through the approach. Um, and it, it's fully, fully, um, observable for any of the transport operators. It helps them understand when there's been issues on the road uh, as part of the approach. Any single event that happens in real time within a matter of seconds, uh, once it's put into the DTP environment, we can see it across the whole of the state. And so that's anything from cars breaking down to crashes to when there's been an environmental event, like a tree falls onto the road. When there's actually been something that's happened with construction, all of that's fully observable. Uh, every single device uh, is accessible on the network. So that's from their thousands of CCTV cameras. Uh, that's around emergency detection systems, around uh, around breakdowns. That's around um, lane use signs, uh, LUMs that we're going through that actually uh, show that if you're driving on motorways, you can see different speeds that you can go in different lanes. All that's observable through this approach. Um, uh, every single traffic signal and also how these signals are are connected so that's it's called a marriage chain and so we're just zooming into this here right so we've uh in australia and this is technology that's been rolled out around the world from australia uh we've got uh, quite an advanced optimization system between our between our traffic signaling uh, it's really hard for engineers to actually understand how that works optimal reality has built the most advanced digital interface to that for any implementation in the world, there's about 200 jurisdictions that use SCETs. Um, uh, finally, as I said earlier, um, this is a multimodal system. So we integrate in everything on the road, but also all the forms of public transport. This is a big business change for the department. Uh, they used to actually have separate public transport and roads divisions. All this has actually been integrated together now as part of the approach. Um, and so that, you know, Ultimately, uh, we can optimize for customers to have an end-to-end -end journey that might involve driving, taking a tram, taking a bus, and then needing to actually change change what they would normally do when things break down uh, as part of the approach. They can control this from from uh, from optimal reality. I'm just gonna zoom you guys through to one or two more things. Uh, so incident response is really important. So uh, right now they have a, 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 a group within the department that actually helps people if they have breakdowns on roads. So they basically drive on patrols. So they drive along the motorways to see if anyone's broken down and it's done in a fashion that's certainly not optimized. Uh, about 10% you know, of the time today, they're directed to go to a spot by the command center. In the future, they want 90% of the direction not to be when people are randomly driving on patrol, but actually um, to be directed from the operations center to get to people when they're actually in a distressed situation. So super important change for the department that we're rolling out as part of our reality. And then final point was actually we've got weather fully integrated into the system. Weather actually makes a real big impact as we all know on transport. Um, they don't actually use that strategically in the, in the past. They just kind of know it happened. Now they can actually do this with our reality. Um, Final view here is just kind of how they can uh, land on home, search across the network. A lot of the types of things that you would expect that experience to be within like Google that we use as consumers. You can do this all within optimal reality, but they have all the additional data and technologies that exist within the enterprise to be able to do this. Kind of final things we're showing here are things like watch lists, so ways that they can kind of um, track a group of things. That, it's kind of like bookmarks for a transport operator that they would want to go through in the day in areas that they would want to focus on. Um, so I'm just going to zoom ahead. So, so one thing I couldn't show, as I mentioned earlier, was what we're doing with CCTV. I'm going to go through that now. 
Um, so one of the biggest transformations as part of this approach was the fact that um, they've got 1,200 cameras in place today. Uh, operators are kind of looking at different cameras based on um, uh, where they tend to think that the problems are. They're not very direct to this part of the approach. What Optimal Reality Auto Eye does is it allows them to look at all the cameras at once with the computer vision solution uh, and then focus in on where the problems are when Auto Eye detects that there's something occurring. So um, I'll kind of walk through a couple of elements of this. So what we do at its core is we're actually tracking every single vehicle across the transport network. Um, that includes you know, cars, motorbikes, buses, trucks, uh, but also active transport, like people along the road or bicycles, trying to actually understand what, what's happening across the whole of the Victorian transport network, where there's a camera. And um, we have an identification process that we do. So we've trained all this data. So you can actually see what's happening, um, how the vehicles are performing, uh, uh, if we're seeing anything unusual in terms of speed, in terms of actually positioning, uh, and we're using this to actually active amount of the transport network. And then importantly, what this is doing is actually looking against things against what we would expect to see. So the Optimality Auto Eye is actually looking at what is the normal baseline of behavior that we see at a whole bunch of different you know, time horizons, different days. And then what are we seeing at that point in time to see is there something unusual occurring? If there is, it generates an event, fuses all the data in with other systems into the environment, and then actually directs the operators what they should look at. Further, they usually then use their cameras to take a, deep, to take a deeper dive look. Um, final point is actually we can look at this from an active transport perspective as well and look at people's behavior. Um, it's not a surveillance system. Uh, it's really about actually understanding safety uh, use cases. But you know, ways that congestion is also impacting the network across across Victoria. Um, and so this is an area we think is really going to build out around things that they could do in the future, not just what they're focused on today, which is around kind of core congestion and incident management. Um, so just to uh, summarize here, um, uh, Upper reality is, is is really having an impact at DTP, and it's quite an advanced system. So um, today, the system has about 15 million messages per hour, about 100 billion a year that go into the system. Uh, and that needs to basically appear from the originating system into the browser in like a second and a half. So really tight SOAs, a super robust and, and complex system from a tech perspective. Um, I was a little bit, I felt a little bit younger when we started this project, it's been a hard project, but it's been super exciting. Um, uh, AWS has told us we're the largest implementation of their panorama technology, which is the core of our auto eye approach in the world, right? So uh, we went early on this technology. We made a bet, it's worked really well. AWS has been a great partner, not just in this technology area, but through the whole program. Um, the uh, It is uh, one of the largest IoT projects in Australia. Um, and so at its core, most of the information that's coming in here is sensor-based and IoT-driven. Um, finally, as I showed, Earlier, this isn't just for the core network operations group where we started. This is about unlocking an ecosystem play across the state of Victoria. That's what, for me, I think is amazingly exciting, right? And so, uh, you know, we, we think there's so much that we can do on this into the future, not just what we're doing today. Um, finally, I, I think it's one of our most advanced projects globally. I, I don't know how to measure that. Uh, I guess these kinds of events are good ways to actually judge that. Um, there's lots of amazing stuff we're doing around the firm, but I think this is pretty cool as well.